Welcome back Parade Watchers, and it's time for a special history video. Today we'll be looking into seven giant helium character balloons that only made one appearance in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Now I know that these seven balloons are not the only ones here. I mean, there's a lot of them. Some were balloons and balloonicles, contest balloons, novelties, etc. But I'm only going to be looking at the giant helium character balloons ranging from the 1980s to the 2000s. The other type of balloons I mentioned would belong in their own individual episodes. So now let's get this started as we go back to the year 1986 as Macy's introduced their 100th character balloon to be produced for the parade's television broadcast on NBC, Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, technically, he's not really the 100th balloon ever made for the parade's history, but he's either as the 100th recognizable character balloon, or the 100th balloon to be produced, as I mentioned. But I'm just listening to what Pat Sajak said. And yeah, I also know about the Upside Down one by Tom Otterness, but that belongs in the Blue Sky Gallery category, so it doesn't count. In terms of his design, it's generic. Now, in terms of why he was retired, I really don't know. Left home. Hey, look at this. This spectacular addition to Mother Goose's family here. It's the 100th balloon to be introduced in the history of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. That famous wall sitter, Humpty Dumpty. Now, obviously, in his balloon recreation here, Humpty's great fall uh, wouldn't cause him a whole lot of damage. I mean, he's consumed more than 12,000 cubic feet of helium just before the parade started. So instead of the great fall, be more like a short sale for Humpty. Still, 45 costume king's men are there to serve his every need. Just a small part of that amazing army of Macy's volunteers that contribute so much to the joy of this holiday and this special 60th parade anniversary. Now we jump from the late 80s to the early 90s, starting in 1992, as the Walt Disney Company sponsored a Goofy Balloon to celebrate his 60th anniversary, undergoing the name Santa Goofy, which in his design shows him being Santa Claus. But apparently, he ended up being tangled up on a Christmas wreath with lights. Not only that he decided to dress up as Santa for the parade, but he was also named Macy's Holiday Ambassador of 1992. Now we're introducing to you the newest, the latest, and greatest. <laughs> it's Goofy, our newest float, 65 feet tall and 60 years old. Goofy and I were sort of born together, isn't he cute? Look at him, Aww. little boy. That's a million dollar <laughs> smile and a million dollar Goofy. You know, Goofy's a dog. Remember the movie Stand By Me? I didn't know Goofy was a dog until I saw that movie. Really? Everybody's trying to figure out what Goofy was. Well, he's a dog. Anyway, furnished for the Walt Disney Company, that most outrageous of Disney characters thinks he's Santa Claus today. Isn't that crazy? Isn't he pretty, cute? He's really cute. I know why he thinks he's Santa Claus, because he's wearing a Santa suit. Hey. He's a smart dog. That's why you're a news person and I'm just a klutz. <laughs> Oh, anyway, with his two very big left feet, Goofy's got himself all tangled up in the holiday wreath. Well, sure hope he gets himself undone before turkey time. Happy Thanksgiving, Goofy, and welcome to the greatest parade in the world, the Macy's Parade. After the parade, Weeks later, the new Santa Goofy balloon appeared at Macy's New York Christmas at Disney's MGM Studios at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, along with Snuggle the Bear, Betty Boop, Kermit the Frog, and the Humpty Dumpty balloon. Now, the question on why Goofy's retirement was short is a good question, especially how recognizable he is, unlike Humpty Dumpty. But with no information from other websites that is not the Wikia, is unknown. But it may be the balloon's height on why he was not used again, even though back then the balloon rules didn't change until 1998.
Moving on to the following year in 1993, when Universal Studios sponsored a dinosaur named Rex from the 1987 children's book, We're Back, A Dinosaur Story, which was adapted into an animated feature film, which was released the day before Thanksgiving of that year. And, as always, it's a generic design of himself. However, on his debut, it did not go well for him as it was a very windy parade, and when Rex came to Columbus Circle, the head of Rex hit a lamppost, and it popped. Now you would think with all those damages to his face, you would think he would be removed, right? No. Unlike Sonic the Hedgehog, who was removed from his debut the same year as Rex due to an accident, with the amount of helium he still had, they let him continue the route faceless. In terms of the parade's broadcast on NBC, in order to avoid his faceless head on live public TV in the US, they showed his test flight footage, and at the end they showed his body already turned down to 34th Street. And after the parade, he was immediately retired, not only because of his damages, but the movie was not liked by a lot of critics and audiences, and it was a box office bomb. And you thought dinosaurs were extinct. It's Rex with a capital T. T-Rex, that is. And we are thrilled that he's here in time for the first Thanksgiving Day Parade for him. Furnished by Universal Studios, Rex wins by a stretch as the longest balloon in the parade. He's 85 feet of pure prehysterical fun. Nicely done. In fact, you'll recognize Rex from Steven Spielberg's new animated film from Universal Pictures. We're back. Check him out. This dinosaur is Dino-Mite. What is he? Dino-Mite. <laughs> Dino-Mite. I, I don't believe Miss America it. 1994 and Joey Lawrence, star of NBC's Blossom, when the parade returns. NBC's telecast of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is sponsored in part by Cotton Incorporated for America's cotton producers. Cotton, the fabric of our lives. And by Olympus, never miss another O. Al's always been uptown in my book. He's still up there. I don't know if he's going to talk to us now, but take a look at what's happening up there right now, 72nd Street. The balloons are getting, that's our new friend, the dragon, isn't it? He's one of the newest members of the family. What's his name? Dudley. Dudley the dragon. One of my favorite shows. He's waving to the crowd. He may enter the race. He is thinking about it. He called Ross Perot about a half an hour ago, and Ross is saying, yes, I'll back you. You're my kind of guy. Two years later, in 1995, Meridian Worldwide decided to sponsor a character from the PBS Kids show, the Adventures of Dudley the Dragon, as the title character was chosen to be the giant balloon. His design shows him waving to the crowd while carrying three toy balloons. However, high winds were expecting to happen throughout the parade, but hope was high for this dragon to be a crowd pleaser for its debut. So much so that the Today Show did a special segment on the making of the Dudley balloon before the parade would start. Manny Bass has been designing balloons and floats at Macy's Parade Studio in Hoboken, New Jersey for more than 30 years. His latest creation, Dudley the Dragon. We can put a hat on him. I don't know how, or I think really what's going to work is the balloon, a bouquet of balloons. Once the concept was decided, clay was molded over a steel skeleton. We want to capture as much as the character as possible. We have to iron out the exact shape. Not what we think, but the exact shape. Everybody has input on this. So we all get together. We say, okay, could you bring that up a little, bend that a little forward, uh, bring the eyes in a little bit, uh, make the shoulders a little wider. Uh, let's, let's, he has a full stomach. Let's get the stomach a little fuller looking, you know. And suddenly, uh, it all comes together. It's everybody's energy coming together on that piece of clay. It's looking real good. It is. It's looking wonderful. He becomes a live, animated character in clay. After the clay model, we do the pattern model, which is done on fiberglass, and then we get into the tedious process of cutting and fabricating, laminating, sewing, that type of thing, and where we have a complete balloon. Earlier 
this month, Dudley crossed the Hudson River, arriving incognito for his first test flight. We have approximately 30 some odd people marching down the parade route and responding to the different flying conditions. And of course the pilot is constantly walking back and giving signals and telling them to go over that way, left, right, or hold, and so on, right on down the parade route. I mean, there's people from all walks of life. They sell shoes, jewelry, suits, dresses, right on that. But they, this day, they volunteer their time and become a balloon handler or whatever have you, coming down the parade route and put on this parade. It's probably the world's largest piece of air sculpture that you ever see anywhere in the world. And then the payoff, of course, is the joy or the smiles that it brings to children. The children re relate to this. When the parade started marching, Dudley went off to a great start. But then when he reached Columbus Circle, things did not go well. A crosswind blew Dudley into a lamppost, causing some showered glass into the crowd with one person with some minor injuries. But when he came to Columbus Circle, he was losing helium fast and eventually collapsed. Because of his damages, he was removed from the parade. But he was not the only one to be removed from the parade, as once again, Sonic had another accident and he was removed again for the second time. As for the parade's broadcast on NBC, when a balloon does not reach Herald Square, NBC shows either a test flight footage, if it's the balloon's debuted, or show a previous year when the balloon was at Herald Square. Since it was Dudley's debut, it was his test flight footage. Willard, you know we've got a, a balloon here for the first time ever in the parade. He's brand new. He just woke up from a hundred year nap, and his name is Dudley the Dragon. He looks refreshed. Dudley's really something to see thanks to his sponsor, Meridian Worldwide. Katie, I understand that Dudley is a real outdoor fan. He stands up for the environment in all of those man-sized sneakers of his. Absolutely, Willard. And the, and the environment could use an advocate that big. Overall, Dudley's the size of a six-story building. That's a lot of smoke and fire. I'm telling you, a lot of green. Even each balloon he's holding is as big as a jacuzzi. Did you know that? I did, Willard. And in this form, Dudley would have to crawl to fit into the studio where he shoots his critically acclaimed live action TV series. His friends are Sammy the Frog and Mr. Krabby Tree. And according to his bio, he's a little clumsy, but he hasn't tripped over any street lights yet. Well, he's better than I am, I'll tell you. I see he's got the royal wave down. The old, uh, you know, sitting in the back of the rolls. Good Looks like room. Dudley's having a good time. My kind of guy. After that year, Macy's decided to retire Dudley. According to an interview with Macy's executive producer, Gene McFadden, she confirmed that Dudley would not appear again in the 1996 parade. Even though there was a promise that he would be back in the 1997 parade after the show's ending on September 13th of that year, it didn't happen. But this quote, she said, might have an answer. She said, We wanted to find the balloons that kids love the most. So that could be the reason why Dudley only appeared once, and maybe with some of the others in this episode, is because of the character's population. I mean, for those people who were 90s kids, did you guys ever watch the show or even heard of Dudley? I know I didn't because I was born in 2000, but when it came to my knowledge about the parade's history, I didn't even know who he was, neither were Sky Dancer and Eben Bear and those two lasted two and four years respectively. As for Dudley the Dragon, he is well known now as the only giant carriage balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade that never made it into the Miracle on 34th Street. In 1997, Scandy Play sponsored a Swedish bull named Bumpy, which in his design, it's generic as always. Even though he had a damage to his back legs and toenails, he still managed to survive the entire parade route along with Arthur, Big Bird, Garfield, Peter Rabbit, Rugrats, and Spider-Man in terms of the giant balloons. Four other balloons were either damaged or pop, and one balloon caused a serious accident that made the last two balloons removed from the parade. And like Dudley, the reason why he could have been retired was his lack of popularity, Cause who in America knows Bumpy? Honestly. 
This is the first, guys. Take a look at the first Scandinavian character to appear in Macy's Parade. He's all the rage in Scandinavia. Now get ready, America. It's Bumpy, or as we know him, Bumpy. Bumpy. That round, red, capricious cow from Swedish designer Bink Lindbergh. Bumpet is furnished by Scandi Playing. Yeah, sure, you betcha, Katie, you sweet lips. At 55 feet high and 33 feet wide, it would take a dozen farmers to milk. But that's utterly... <coughs> Sorry about that. Because Bumpy is a heat cow. That means that's he's a bull. I hear some other things re readers of Bumpy books know. Huh. He's Laplandic and doesn't speak. Ooh. Bumpy thinks, imagines, and dreams. You know what he dreams about? What's that? She cow. <laughs> Where's my next line? <laughs> he looks good in the fjord. Yeah, certainly. Did. He looked good in the Chevrolet. Hey, to earn money for their trip to New York, the Manette... In 1998, when Macy's and the people of New York City have the new rules for the balloons on their size limits, the expansion of the handlers and pilots, and have two utility vehicles to help control the balloons, Three new balloons were the first ones to do this big change. Marie Sendek's Wild Thing from Where the Wild Things Are, Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory, and Babe the Pig, the star of the 1995 Oscar-winning film Babe, who was promoting his sequel, Babe, Pig in the City. And like Rex the Dinosaur, his sponsor, Universal Studios, released the film the day before Thanksgiving with another generic design. However, like the previous year, it was heavy winds with the addition of heavy rain, which managed to deflate four balloons before even starting the parade. Meanwhile, ready for a little ham on Turkey Day, Matt? Yeah, when pigs fly. Well, then feast your eyes on that irresistible piglet and film sensation Babe. Ear to ear, he's as wide as the wingspan of a Cessna 150. Babe's the first of three brand new giant balloons in this year's parade. That is one very pudgy piglet. Balloon babes the size of three movie screens. I'll guess all Babe's co-stars at Hoggett's Farm are met watching his parade debut, especially his adopted mom, Fly, and his neurotic friend, Ferdinand. I'm sure they're very proud indeed. Everyone remembers Farmer Hoggett won Babe at a county fair when he guessed his weight. Our best guess about this Babe's weight? Try 464 pounds, 30 times heavier than Babe in the movie. And we want to tell you that our lovable piglet was furnished by Universal Pictures and is currently making kids of all ages squeal with delight in the new movie, Babe, Pig in the City. More Broadway shows, plus Barney, the all-new Captain Kangaroo, and the Pointer Sisters when Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade returns live here on NBC. Even though he survived the parade, he ended up retired after his only appearance, probably due to the film's box office flop and mixed reception. Years later, the Bay Balloon was redesigned into an original character named Hamlet the Balloon Skull Pig, which he has more of a cartoon face and might have borrowed Corduroy's overalls, but make it better as he was used as a test flight balloon from the early to mid-2000s. And yes, that's his name. And finally, in this special episode, we go into 2001, as some sort of universal company sponsored the mischievous monkey from H.A. Ray and Margaret Ray, Curious George, as he celebrates his 60th anniversary from his first adventures in the big city with the man with the yellow hat. His design shows him being curious, as always, while wearing a winter hat and scarf to keep him warm for his debut. And not only he was the first giant balloon to kick off the Macy's Parade's 75th anniversary, but he was also named Macy's Holiday Ambassador of 2001. Meanwhile, look who's having more fun than a barrel of monkeys, Clue. He left the jungle in 1941. In care of the man in the yellow hat. Today he's climbing all over the big city on his Macy's Parade debut. Matt, do you know who this is? J. Fred Muggs. No, eh. it's Curious George, of course, making his parade debut and celebrating 
his 60th birthday, if you can believe that. Vivendi Universal furnishes us with that mischievous monkey whose millions of fans can read about his latest adventure in Curious George in the big city. All right, we've read about him and seen this famous character, but no one's ever heard Curious George, so this is definitely a first. Let's listen. <laughs> It was worth the wait, wasn't it? <laughs> but whatever our amazing little hero is up to today, I'm sure he'll keep it under his cool red, green, and yellow hat, which, by the way, is bigger than a New York City hotel room. All right, somebody get the hook. <laughs> it's cute. After his big kickoff debuted, he ended up being retired for unknown reasons. I mean, it would have made sense to return him back to the parade during the mid-2000s to promote his theatrical movie and his PBS kids show, but now it could be because of the fate of his pain on why he didn't return. So this marks the end of the one-timers that were giant balloons in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. This was a nice retrospective to look at these seven characters, but we only got five more characters to talk about until the night before Thanksgiving. Who is the season finale? Before that, we got Toothless, Blue, Mr. Monopoly, and next, the icon of Looney Tunes himself, Bugs Bunny. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more on Bry Guy 2000.